Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to talk about some major updates from the space station built by China. The Tiangong 1 station that we've discussed in one of the previous videos. The station that at some point is going to look something like this. And the thing is, in the last few months there have been quite a lot of updates coming from the station, but unfortunately I wasn't really able to make any videos about it, and so I decided to sort of summarize all of them in this particular video. But I really wanted to start right here, in this post from the Caledonian Astronomy Association that essentially discussed and also explained a lot of these really unique observations of these extremely beautiful looking spirals that were reported by several people living in the Asia-Pacific region. And naturally the mystery here was that these were launches by the Chinese Space Agency. And what we're seeing here are just the emissions from the rockets themselves. The rockets similar to this one, known as Long March 2. And so this unusual formation in the night skies symbolized a new step for the mission behind the space station. Every single spiral suggested that more rockets were sent, bringing something new to the station. With the most recent spiral representing the launch of these three wonderful astronauts. The two space veterans, which you see right here, Zhai Jigang and Wang Yaping, and the first Chinese female astronaut, Ye Guangfu, that have just arrived to the space station not so long ago and are going to actually spend 180 days living on the station. This is going to be the longest time any Chinese astronaut has ever lived in space. And their main reason to be in space is essentially continuing building the station, taking over from the first three astronauts that were living here for approximately 90 days. So in other words, this is the second part of the manned mission to the space station, which also means that I need to talk about the first three astronauts which I unfortunately missed the first time the mission was launched. And these three astronauts are extremely well known in China and obviously because of their fame also have their own Wikipedia pages. We have Ni Haishen, who was the mission commander and also a decorated hero in China. And although almost no one knows about him in the Western world, he's basically a Chinese celebrity, at least to some extent. And what's really unusual is that even a lot of people in Africa know about him. This is him on a Somalian stamp. And somewhere out there, there's even an asteroid with his name on it. And this was also his third trip to space, so he's basically the most experienced person they have right now. With the other two astronauts being Liu Bomin and Tan Hongbo. For Liu, this was the second trip, and for Tan right here, this was his first trip to space. But these three astronauts have completed their mission quite successfully, and they've now returned to planet Earth. And during their 90 day stay there, they've managed to achieve quite a lot. For example, they've managed to successfully perform China's second ever spacewalk. And this spacewalk occurred approximately 13 years after the first one back in 2008. And in this case, they were also using brand new spacesuits designed very recently with a lot of parts and a lot of initial design based on the earlier Russian technology. And this is actually the natural of this mission. A lot of things in here, a lot of parts, a lot of individual details, they all sort of to some extent resemble the earlier Russian mission known as Mir. And a lot of these components resemble Russian parts simply because Russia played an extremely important role in helping China develop all of this. With one important difference, the resemblance is really only external. The internal parts are way way more advanced, pretty much everything on the inside is an entirely new technology. So it's as if someone took all of the parts from the older Russian missions and upgraded them with all of the modern technology. Which to me personally makes this mission extremely interesting. It's as if we're living through that same era when the Russians were building space stations and so were the Americans, but the era when I was just too little to remember anything. This time though we get to experience it again through a completely different country. So basically here they're taking their baby steps in building something completely from scratch, completely by themselves, with barely any help from anyone. But I guess what makes this somewhat more interesting is how for about 5 years China was pretty much not interested in space almost at all. And suddenly, a couple of years ago, the entire program practically got resurrected in just a few months and we now have a space station, a bunch of lunar modules, a Martian module, and a lot more stuff being planned on a monthly basis. And so personally, I hope that this drive doesn't just disappear and China keeps going, mostly because it will encourage other space programs to either join in or to compete. And so in other words, what I'm actually hoping for is maybe another space race. But anyway, let's go back to the mission. So after the recent launch, China has now sent 17 astronauts to space. 
with the first astronaut being Yan Liwei, who was launched to space back in 2003. And so, in the last 18 years, they managed to launch 17 astronauts. And this recent Chinese success intrigued a lot of other organizations as well. For example, we know that Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, has been actively trying to become part of this program, even hoping that the Chinese agency will launch their rockets on a slightly different orbit in order for Russia to be able to join them eventually. This, however, did not happen. But now various European agencies and also Russian agency are thinking they could maybe join the Chinese space uh, station by launching from the European Space Agency Launch Center located in French Guiana near the equator. This is the South American uh, launch platform that already has the capability to launch Russian rockets, but it would still have to be modified for a human launch as well. This platform is currently only used for unmanned launches. And since Russia already mentioned that they're probably going to be withdrawing from the International Space Station by possibly 2024, it would make quite a lot of sense for them to try to join in with someone else. And China, in this case, is probably going to be their next partner. Although, honestly, that will be quite a downgrade from what the Russian astronauts have been experiencing on the International Space Station. For example, this right here is currently the entire size of the cabin where three of the astronauts have to live for the next 180 days. I've actually visited one of these similar cabins in one of the space museums a few years ago, and this place is cramped. Like, sometimes I think my studio where I work is really small, but this right here is tiny. And so if more astronauts are going to be living here, it is not going to be super comfortable. And so it'll be interesting to see where all of this goes. But I guess for now, what exactly are these three wonderful people going to be doing there? Well, at the moment, the station only contains one of the major modules, and this second module is planned to be launched in probably May of 2022. So right now, we only have this part right here, and eventually the second and the third modules are going to be added to complete the station. And so the second science module, known as Wentian, needs to have everything ready for its attachment. And so the purpose of this particular mission right now is to get ready for the second module. For approximately 180 days, they're going to be testing everything, they're going to be making sure everything works, and they're also going to install all of the needed equipment on the outside in preparation for the docking and for the attachment of the second module. Interestingly, to do most of this, China will be using this beautiful robotic arm that's somewhat reminiscent of the Canada arm located on the International Space Station, although in this case, it's also slightly more advanced as well. So this will be used to attach the modules and this will also be used for a lot of other EVA activity. And so at the moment, the plan right now is for all of this to be finished by late 2022. So essentially in approximately a year from now. But I guess the most exciting part of this mission that will occur in about maybe three years from now is going to be this right here, a space telescope. The telescope known as Zuntian that's going to be launched in 2024 and will have very similar capabilities to Hubble, but will also have an ability to redock with the space station to be repaired or to have additional modules installed. So in other words, in approximately three to four years from now, this will be operated as a kind of a space telescope docking station, which already makes this a pretty exciting mission, simply based on what Hubble was able to achieve in the last few decades. But to make all of this happen, China is going to be launching manned missions to the station for the next 10 years, so this will stay operational until at least 2031. And since at the moment nobody really knows what's going to happen to the International Space Station past 2024, right now there's actually a really big chance that the Chinese Space Station might be the only space station in operation past 2025. Which is one of the reasons why both Russia and a lot of European agencies are trying to jump on this and to try to create some sort of collaboration. And all of this success with the space station and with a lot of other launches, including the Martian and the lunar missions, has given China quite a lot of ambition to already propose several other missions, including a potential manned mission to Mars with five expeditions starting in 2033, and possibly even a creation of what's essentially a space elevator, although in this case they refer to this as a sky ladder all of which could, in theory, propel us to a completely new stage of space exploration. But for now, at least, pretty much all of this is extremely theoretical, and for all we know, China might actually end up doing the same thing they did a few years ago. Sort of go on a very long space hiatus, where they barely do anything for many years, 
simply due to the lack of interest or possibly due to the lack of funding. So it's very difficult to predict where all of this goes, but honestly, right now it does look very exciting. And so for all we know, maybe China will actually force a lot of other space organizations to try harder and to get farther with a lot of their missions as well. And so maybe this is actually what we needed to begin a new space race. But I guess for now, that's all I wanted to mention in this particular video. As more updates come out of China and as we learn more about their space station, I'm going to follow this up with another video sometime in the future. For now, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.